everybody! It's Miss Kirsten, and today we are going to make papyrus. So papyrus is a type of paper that was made in ancient Egypt. Now, if you think about ancient Egypt, you're probably conjuring up images of mummies or pyramids, maybe the Sphinx, but they also wrote things down. They wrote a lot of things down. They carved words into their monuments. They wrote words down on their papyrus scrolls. And ancient Egyptians believed that there was a god in charge of writing, and his name was Thoth. And if you look, where is it? Here, you can see that Thoth has the head of an ibis and the body of a person. Lots of ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses were part animal and part human. Um, now, papyrus paper traditionally was made using the papyrus reed, which is a marsh plant that grows near the Nile River. You would cut the reeds and lay them out to dry. And then you would thwack them with special instruments and to flatten them and let them dry again. And then you would thwack them again and let them dry again. That's three times. It takes a long time to get those reeds dry. Then you pull the fibers apart and you lay one layer like this and one layer like this and use a special adhesive to make the papyrus paper. Of course, we don't have three weeks to make a piece of paper. We have about half an hour. So we're going to use a shortcut. Instead of pounding reeds and waiting for them to dry, we are going to use brown paper. Now, if you brought, if you picked up a bag from the library, you will have two sheets of brown paper that look just about like this. You will also have a paint cup, a paint brush, one popsicle stick, a piece of wax paper, and a cup of glue. Like in all of my videos today, I will be using white glue to show you since it shows up better on camera instead of the clear glue that you have in your bags. All right, you will probably want some scissors and two bowls, one of which has plain water in it. Okay, so to start, we're going to lay out our wax paper. Might want to turn it over so it doesn't roll up on you. There we go. And then we're going to take our brown paper and you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut tiny strips. Narrow, narrow strips. Narrow strips. Just like this. And you're going to do this for both of your pages. Cut the narrow strips. I will tell you that once our papyrus has been created, it is difficult to move it without a solid surface underneath. So if you have a cookie sheet or something, or you have a place where you can leave it to dry overnight, that's the best place to do this. So we're just cutting strips of paper and cutting strips of paper. I'm only going to cut one and show you the technique so that we're not spending 30 minutes cutting strips of paper. But I will cut this one up all the way just to give you time. And they don't have to be perfect. But just make sure that they're not much more than half an inch wide. We 
takes this long to cut strips of paper. Aren't you glad we're not drying reeds on camera? <laughs> that would be exceptionally exciting to watch. Okay. Just a few more here. About a quarter or a half an inch wide. Just straight down the paper. And I will let you know that they're easier to cut down the short side. So if your paper is not perfectly square, make sure you're cutting the strips the shorter way instead of the longer way. You'll get more paper out of it in the end. See the end. The light approaches. the next thing. Yay! There we go. All right. So if you're not asleep from watching me cut off all that much paper, then we can move on to the next step. And the next step is to mix our glue solution. So take your glue and put it in the bottom of your bowl. And then you're going to put an equal amount of water at the bottom of your bowl. And then you can take either a spatula if you have one handy, or you can take your popsicle stick and you can stir it up until it is all one consistency. So you won't have any glue lumps in the bottom. So with the white glue, it looks something like this. Can you see? Okay, you don't want any glue stuck to the bottom. You just want it all mixed together in your bowl. Okay, then you take a strip and you get it wet. Slick it off, and you lay it out on your wax paper. Take a strip, get it wet, slick it off, lay it down right next to, and a little bit overlap, just a little tiny overlap of your first piece. So there's no gaps, okay? You don't want any gaps between your between your uh, between your pieces, okay? Show that again. Dip your strip. Slick it off. Lay it down so there are no gaps. You did a really good job cutting your strips straight. This will be very easy <laughs> because they will just overlap right away. See, they overlap right away. Okay. Strip. 
slick it off. A couple more, and then I'll show you the next step. Straight. Now, if you've never done paper mache, this is a very similar process, just with a little bit different ingredients. Yep. Slick. I'm going to make sure there's no air bubbles either between the paper and your wax paper. Okay. All right. Now, once you have half of your strips going one way, so you use half the strips you cut and go one way across the wax paper, then you take your strips. And you dip. And you slick. And you'll go across the other way. See? Like this. So you'll have two layers of paper. One going horizontally and one going vertically. Horizontal like the horizon. Dip. Slick and no, dip, dip. There we go. Slick, press. And as you can see, as we make the layers, it turns into a pretty cool product. And once you've gotten all your strips down, you're going to let it dry overnight. And when you wake up, your paper should look Something like this. This is a piece that I made, oh, about a week ago. And I let it dry overnight, and it looked almost exactly like this when I came back the next day. So when it dries all the way like that, you can use our handy-dandy hieroglyphics translation sheets that are, that are added in your bag. Or there are plenty of places online that translate the Egyptian hieroglyphics into alphabetic letters. We also have this lovely book in the YA department. It's a fantastic book if you want to write your own hieroglyphics. So once your paper is dry, you're going to take your paint. And just like Egyptian scribes did in ancient days, you're going to use some ink or use paint so it's not quite so drippy. And you're going to use a brush and you are going to write your name. Now, there's some things about the Egyptian alphabet that you should know before you just start writing down letters. The Egyptian alphabet is phonetic, which means the sound is more important than the spelling. So if your name is George, then you would use this little snake down here as the first sound of your name, because that's the J sound. But if your name is Grace, then you would use this little pot here, because that's the hard G, G sound. Okay. Egyptians also didn't like to write down a whole lot of vowels. We do have some vowel equivalents here, um, but don't be too concerned about using vowel sounds or making the vowels uh, work out correctly. So if your name is Kate, you would use the CK, the little cup there, and then you would use the bird for the A sound, and then you would use 
little hat down here for the T sound, but you wouldn't put the silent E on the end because that's not part of how your name sounds. Does that make sense? I hope that makes some sense. So if I were to write the name Joy, ooh, I picked a tough one. I would start with the J, which is the little snake. Snake head and a little neck and tail and the tail. See? J. Oi. Let's see. I think that would be an O. Just the curly Q. And an I, which is the feather. Here we go. Joy. Now, you will find in your packet, there are lots of other words that we have that you can write down. You can write down man or woman or child, animal. There's a word for city or house. You could even describe yourself. You could be gorgeous or brave or dazzling. And here are some other words. Dreams, laughter, hair, heart. And since writing was considered sacred in ancient Egypt, nearly all scrolls ended with a specific symbol. The eye of Horus, who looked out to make sure that the words were not used incorrectly. So you can see that I have another sheet here that has some writing on it. Um, this is my name, Kirsten here. This one is beautiful, I think. Is it? Let me look. No, it is not. I'll find it. Ah, laughter, which is more appropriate. This down here, this is the symbol for life, health, and wealth. It is a very common blessing in ancient Egypt. You find it all over on houses and coins and all kinds of different places. So I wrote, I wrote that down and then I ended it with the eye of Horus here. All right, I hope you guys have a lot of fun making your papyrus paper. Um, I really would like to see some pictures of your finished scrolls. Um, so if you could take pictures when you're all done with your project and tag us on Facebook with those, that would be fantastic. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Um, this is the last children's program for our summer discovery session. So I really appreciate all you guys hanging in there and figuring this out along with us. Um, we will be returning to Facebook Live, hopefully in August or September. So keep your eyes open for that. We will have more information on our website and on Facebook as soon as we know what's going on. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you soon.